Hey guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University. And what I'm gonna be talking about today is Artie Semek. Now he is one of the unsung heroes of comic books, all comic books, but anybody who does remember him, you probably remember him from Marvel Comics in the very, very beginning. Anyway guys, let's get into this. Let's see what we can learn. Art Artie Semek was born on the 6th of January, 1916. He was an American calligrapher and for most of his life, he penned the letters in Marvel Comics. Now, he started out in DC Comics, and his first traceable work was a Batman and Superman crossover in World's Finest, issue number 91, in a backup story called The Three Super Sleepers, back in December of 1957. However, he worked in the comics since the 1940s. Why was he never credited? Well, only the writer and the artists were ever credited in the comics for the longest time. That is, until Stan Lee got some power in editorial and made it a standard that the anchor and letterer would get credit for their contributions too. A casual comics reader will be under the impression that the letters of the comics were added in by computer. Unfortunately, there were no computers back then, and no artist would allow a sloppy typewriter to crimple up their pages. So, it was an actual calligrapher who did the letters in the comics right after the penciler drew in the pictures that he or she wanted. The letterer, as the calligrapher was credited as, would take pen to paper and find whatever space each panel had available to fill in a word balloon, a thought bubble, or a narration box, as was called for, and then inscribe whatever the writer had scripted. Sometimes the letterer had to improvise, like when Jack Kirby or Gene Cullen would go off script, as they were often wont to do. It didn't stop there, though. The letterer was responsible for all the sound effects, too. I bet you thought that the artist drew those in, didn't you? Well, I could see someone like Walt Simonson doing that, but most of the time it was the letterer, and no one could do it like Artie Semek. Not only did the letterer draw in the words and the sound effects, but he or she was also responsible for the words on the cover, including the title. Could you honestly imagine the comics without those amazing titles? Artie Semek is credited with collaboration on the design of so many titles that it's insane that most people have never heard of him. Again, Stan Lee is the guy who made it the standard that letterers got the credit they so richly deserved, and Art was the most prominent of the Marvel letterers. He shared the stage of Marvel's go-to letterers with Sam Rosen, and Sam did more than his fair share. Imagine all those artists and all those writers writing all of those comics, and only two people were responsible for filling in the words, sound effects, and titles of all those comics. Gene Colan, famous for his artistry for Daredevil, Tomb of Dracula, and Batman, once commented that Artie was like a living Norman Rockwell painting, in that he was the ideal American. Gene also said that Artie could play the spoons, He'd hold two spoons in one hand and twist them in such a way that they'd bop together and make a melody. Art was an easy person to remember if you read those old Marvel comics in the 60s, because whenever Stan Lee would credit the contributors of the comics, Art would get the worst title. Stan would title himself as Smiling Stan Lee or Stan the Man Lee. Jack Kirby would be Jack the King Kirby or Jolly Jack Kirby. But Art would always get nicknames like adorable Artie Semek, and letterer of breathtaking adequacy. Once his name was written larger than anyone else's, and it was stated that this was done because it was cheaper than giving him a raise. Seeing as Art was the one who actually lettered these words and these titles, it's pretty clear that he had a great sense of humor. On the record album, Mary Marvel Marching Society, where Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and so many others can be heard talking briefly, Artie speaks for a while, even taking a phone call from his fellow letterer, Sam Rosen. They compliment each other's lettering, and after Artie hangs up, he jokingly comments that he can't stand Sam. If you're watching this video on YouTube, there's a link to that video in the description. Artie died on the 20th of February, 1975. His final work was in lettering for Giant Size Defenders, number five, July of 75. Hey guys, Professor Bill is constantly reading comics. I mean, it's almost like that's all I do when I'm not working. But the point is that I'm sitting here reading this particular comic. Uh, it's uh, Marvel Premiere, issue number 24, because I'm writing about the character that's in there right now. And there will be a video coming up. If you want to know which character is, simply look up that comic and you'll see. If not, just keep watching the video. The, the point is that I also like to read the Marvel bullpen bulletins because there's always some good stuff in there, including Stan, Stan Lee's soapbox. And 
one of the coolest parts is that you get to see the what currently was happening when this comic was out. And I was planning on making an Artie Simek video anyway because, again, his birthday. And this is what I happened to find on here. I'm going to actually read it to you. On February 20th, 1975, early in the morning, the comic book industry lost one of its foremost talents. Artie Simek died. For some 30-odd years, the majority of his life, Artie produced a venerable mountain of work and gained a reputation for being a true professional. He was one of the cornerstones in building the mighty world of Marvel, and his efforts cannot be ignored. To those of us who are privileged to know Artie, he has a valuable friend. Excuse me, he was a valuable friend. It's old print. A unique personality and an irreplaceable co-worker. He will be missed. Really sad. I actually kind of broke my voice a little bit while I was reading it, you know, the first time. Not this time. But anyway, guys, Artie Simek was incredible for all the contributions that he did. And to go for so many years without even once being mentioned in the credits of the comics. And God only knows what he was being paid, you know? If you're not even going to be mentioned, if you're not even going to be credited. But it's cool that he finally was. And that goes for Sal Rosenberg and all the others who... Did, who toiled just writing letters all the time. But it's a good indication that, hey, calligraphers do still have work out there. The point is, he was an incredible artist, and even if the only thing that he did was those particular titles for Iron Man and for Thor and for all the other characters that he did, I mean, that alone would have been one heck of a contribution because that's one of the ways that we can easily recognize the superheroes, the characters who we love so much. So, this is just a brief little tribute to Artie Simek. There's almost nothing written about him out there, very little. Uh, very few pictures that you're going to scrounge and finally dig up, and it's sad. It's really sad that this guy is just kind of almost lost in history. And to comic book fans, me, the people watching this channel, students and fellow professors, it's sad. So on this January 6th birthday of Artie Simek, I just want to give a little shout out and a recollection, a call for everyone to just kind of give a little thought to the initial contributors to comics, the pioneers who really started it all for all of us. They sparked our imagination. They did a lot. And yeah, it must have been hard. Mountains of work. Anyway, guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.